Mr. Paolo Foglia, yes, the last speech of this session. Mr. Paolo Foglia has a long experience on certification on textile also and on natural fibers. We spoke very little about natural fibers. We, <laughs> as a feather canapa, I am especially concerned about this. Okay. Grazie, eh, proverò veramente anch'io, l'ho detto prima Beppe, chi dice sarò breve, il solito mente, però cercherò veramente di essere breve. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I try to be very, very, yeah, very fast. Uh, ok, I want just to introduce a little bit some elements of the European normative framework, because I think that we have to assume that uh, we are part of this European region where we are developing something that will affect the sector very fast, even if you know that uh, we are very close to the European election and uh, this, all the process seems to slow a little bit, but there is a very huge uh, change in act and I think that uh, all the industry will be affected very, 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 in a very consistent way. So here briefly, uh, it's, uh, that is a very important communication. It's related to making sustainable product the norm. What is important from this communication is that we, can, we have to start from the very beginning. We cannot start talking recycling starting from waste because we have to start with eco-design approach. We have to really think about how product has to be produced, has to be designed taking into consideration what is the end of life of that product. And I think that the European Union is providing us a very good picture of that. And what is part of that? And then we go back to, to the certification. There are, of course, there are lots of uh, different uh, regulation, new proposal, directive, uh, but three of them, I've just chosen three of them. The first one is uh, the, the famous regulation of eco-design. It's very important and we have to be careful when we are talking about the Green New Deal and what is changing in Europe because not all the industry, even if they're claiming to um, say to be more sustainable, are playing the same in the same side the game. I mean, at the moment, most of the industry is is against that regulation. I mean, because they're saying it's, it's too much for us, we increase the cost. So it's not really easy, it's not really even true that all the industry is moving in, in the same direction of sustainability, but that regulation is very relevant. Part of that, there is a, a special sectoral initiative, the EU strategy for sustainable circular products. And then the second one, empower, protect the consumer, because the consumer is part of of the game because they, finally they are asking to go into the shop and to buy what we are proposing as more sustainable. So we had to convince them that what is more sustainable makes sense and has to be purchased instead of something else. But at the same time, we had to protect them because most of the, uh, uh, lots of uh, actor or economic actors are interested to influence their decision when they are going to buy. So, and there is this phenomenon of greenwashing that we have to really to, to think about. So, uh, just to, to tell you, okay, these are just the principle of eco-design, you know, and you see that uh, we have to consider all of them together if we want to move fast towards sustainability. So durability and reusability goes together with recyclability. And the percentage of recycled content is part of the same picture of presence of substances of concern. We cannot just you know, it's a cherry picking to go and to decide what is more relevant for us. We have to consider the full picture and the full criteria and try to move into that direction. And just to give you an, an idea where we are right now, this is the outcome of the consultation which was carried out by the European Commission last year. And you see that how textile and footwear sector is ranking is at the top of the priority for the European Union because that regulation is not just for textile, it's for so many other sectors and you see that textiles it's really on the top of the priority for the European Commission and when it goes to 
<laughs> the, 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 the big number of criteria that can be considered uh, in developing the regulation have been selected five aspects and what came, us, uh, came out as uh, priorities, look, is durability, recyclability, and the content of post-consumer materials. These are the three key points that we had to take into consideration. And then, of course, even the remaining criteria will be developed in future. Uh, okay, here and again, but we have no time to go for that. And uh, this is the strategy for sustainable and circular te textile products. It's important because inside that, that document, you can see what the European Union has in mind. Uh, so it's, uh, it's another part that is introduction on the ban on the extraction of unsold products. This is a very common thing now. You know, this is the normal practice in the market. Uh, especially for branded garments that can be easily recycled or you know uh, or just uh, delivered to to the recycling industry but in future there will be a ban and that is uh, something that has to be considered and then the reducing of accidental release of microplastic again this will be part of the policy uh, okay now i just want to go very fast to the consumers because that is uh, Another relevant part. You see on, 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 on the bottom some of the, um, the main findings on the research which was carried out by the European Union when they were preparing the, the proposal of the directive on communication on explicit environmental declarations. And you see that uh, there were lots, there are lots in the market, lots of claims, lots of advertising, Anyone is claiming to be sustainable in a way or in the other, but most of them are not supported by any relevant, credible, miserable uh, data and information. So all the consumers that we want to convince to buy, to buy something that is more sustainable is every day confused. And we are playing that game, we are confusing them, we are saying, okay, we are green, we are sustainable, by me, by you, but we are not doing it the right way. And that is the conclusion of, of that um, research of the European Union. That's why that, that directive is very, very important because it's introducing what is, what is changing very rapidly. So that uh, from one side, they want to ensure that all companies will provide sufficient data, reliable data, measurable data, in order to make consumers able to properly decide what they want to buy. From the other side, the directive say, okay, we have to protect the consumers, so they are going to change the code, the code, the, the, the legislation, European legislation, introducing new, I can say, fatti specie I, I can say uh, in English, um, New, uh, I cannot find the English word for that, but it's a penalty. I mean, they are introducing something that is, greenwashing will be not only something, just a word, but there will be a, a system for stopping that mechanism, and everything will be part of a verification, meaning that the European Union said, okay, any, any claim must be verified, must be verified by a third party organization which is accredited according to the regulations uh, 70, 765. And that is important because it means that no one else will be allowed to put into the market something with a claim that is not properly verified, not based on real data, on real performance and so on. Uh, Okay, verification, okay, how we're verification we work, but just to conclude with certification and why certification will be important in that new framework. Because certification will, it's, it's increasingly in relationship with the regulation. It's, uh, th there is this, this sort of, of a change. The regulation is proposing new, new issues, new topics, new, and certification is adapting the system, the methodology is providing something and is working in a double field because one of that is the, the business to business relationship. So there is the market that needs transparency because anyone that is selling 
must have the same information of from the one that is purchasing, sorry, for the, the purchaser need to have the same information on the seller. So there is a, a, a really a relevant issue of transparency of the market and certification is providing to solve that problem. From the other side, circularity, when we are talking about circularity, not just a matter of materials, it's not just a matter, it's a matter even of how we make the, the full process more circular because Okay, can, we can use even recycling material, we can recycle more material, but we have to assure that we are even recycling water, reusing or redu reducing energy, making the system more circular, so it's not just a matter of, of the single product and materials, and then of course, we have always to think about the, the carbon footprint because this is the main environmental issue. Because all the Green Deal is uh, working around the, the, uh, around the low climate, uh, the climate law, the European climate law. It's this, I would say, common commitment that all we have to uh, keep the, 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 the increase of temperature below 1.5. So the Paris Agreement is uh, still there. We are committed to, 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 to reduce uh, that amount or to keep it into um, below two degree, degree in few years. But at the same time, yes, uh, I have to remind that uh, because, uh, okay, so I was thinking something that happened just a couple of days ago. Talking about what is up, what is sustainable in terms of environmental sustainability or social sustainability, another another really interesting regulation is related to the due diligence. Maybe you heard about that. It's given to the the, the medium sized a big company the duty to do to be more proactive, to make more efforts in doing that. And think about the two countries, Germany and Italy, have been able for the moment to stop the process. So that I just want to call you about this strange uh, period uh, of time we are living in, where sustainability is increasing in terms of relevance and so on. But from the same time, when some tractors are moving into the road, all this process at European level is stopping. So we are living in exactly in that moment, even if we, we see that we have lots of regulation in, in the European framework that is moving fast, but at the moment, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a sort of uh, <laughs> yeah, problem in our relationship between organization and different interests. And a, again, it's important, the key performance indicator will play more uh, relevance in future because not everything can be done with LCA. Sorry for that. LCA is nice, fantastic, a good game. It's something important. But when we are introducing mandatory requirements to all the industry, we cannot require thousand companies to make LCA. So we had to invent a different system based on some, I'd say, different technology or even methodology to measure what is happening to the company in a continuous way. So key performance indicator is something that will become more relevant in future. And because we provide data every time, uh, and it's uh, otherwise with HCA, we can do the huge, the, the, the very, the primary study, but not the study for every, every kind of product. And then finally, all these data information, when we are collecting data information on the bus sustainability, has to be disclaimed. So even that, this is the last part of my presentation saying, okay, we are improving material, we're improving the processes, we are providing evidences of that, and then again, we have to provide the, the big picture to the big public, even to the, the financial pub, part of, uh, uh, the public and to to the remaining uh, to the consumer and to all the other stakeholders that we can consider. Okay, thank you very much. I try to be very <laughs> short. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you also for the shortness. Uh, it's a pity because uh, you know the last <laughs> we said and uh, but that's a difference in the tractor history because uh, the Green Deal 
don't protected European farmers from imports from other not European countries. Instead, in the, in the directive, uh, textile directive, if I knew well, all the, rule, the rules are equal for all countries, also for the... Uh, this is an important uh, difference. 